My name is Shamsul Rahman. I'm your today's tutor. Okay, this is my Qatar ID. All right, I will be uh, training you guys on Fire Warden, and the resources we will be using is like our projector. Okay, for the backup, we have an additional LED. If anything went wrong with the projector, so we'll be using the LED. All right, then we have a whiteboard. Okay, if anything, we can write on the whiteboard and we can make you understand like very properly and very easily. All right. So I would like to have your introduction as well. Okay, I would like to know your name and when was the last time you attended fire water training? Please. Okay, when, when was the last time you attended uh, fire water training? First time. Okay, be seated, no problem. Be seated, be seated, okay? This is the third time, okay? Yes, sir? First time? Okay, first time, okay? First time, perfect. Second time, okay? Okay. Second time, perfect. First time, so okay. okay. Perfect. First time, okay, sir. First time. Okay, first time. First time. Perfect. This is your second time, yeah? You're attending. Okay, perfect. So today, yeah, we will be learning about Fire Warden. Okay, then what would be we do before starting our session is I would like you to put your mobile phone on silent mode. Okay, if you receive, if you want to receive a phone call, you can just receive it, raise your hand, go out and receive your call, but make sure do not waste extra time. Yeah, so we will be having some break in between, like because this session will go up to seven to eight hours. We will be having break, the one who is fasting. Okay, you can sit here, you can take some rest, like for five to ten minutes, but the one who is not fasting, we have a pantry here, we have some cookies, we have coffee, you can have your coffee. All right, so if you need any sort of first aid assistance, I'm the first aider, and we also have like a first aid, assigned first aider in the building, so in case you need first aid, so we can call them to assist you. All right, so today, we don't have any emergency drill, any mock drill, if you have any sound or emergency alarm, please follow me or please follow this uh, exit route. You can see the uh, signage is there, right? We will go downstairs in the assembly area, right? Thank you. Okay, so what is the aim of today's session? So what we will learn? Okay, the aim of today's session is to help you to understand the importance of fire safety and how you can contribute to a safe working environment. Okay, you will learn, okay, the importance of fire safety. Then you will know how you can contribute in your workplace to make it safe for your workers, to save the property as well, yeah? Then, if we, we will give you awareness what can, you can do in the workplace to reduce the risk of fire, then what will be your responsibilities, what action you will take to reduce the risk of fire in your workplace, right? Then the third aim is like, advise you on what action you need to take in the event of fire. Now first is what action you will take or how you will contribute to reduce the risk of the fire, yeah? Then one, what will happen, what you will do when there is already a fire, what action you will take? Okay, we will learn that. That's our aim. So now, what exactly we will learn today is, we will learn what is fire, what is fire, the theory of fire. Okay, then we will learn common causes of fire. What are the causes, what are the ignition sources that causes fire in the workplace? We will learn that. Then classes of fire. Fire has been divided into different classes. Right? We will learn how many uh, types of fires are there and which type of fire 
lies in which classification. So, okay, then we will learn types of fire extinguishers. So, if there is any sort of fire, so what we use to extinguish the fire? Fire extinguisher, yeah? So, we will learn how many types of fire extinguishers are there and what type of fire extinguishers used on a specific type of fire, right? Then, reducing the risk of fire. So, how we can contribute to reduce the risk of fire in our workplace, right? Which would be what would be our roles and responsibilities, right? Then the role of fire wardens. So now, today onward, once you will be getting your uh, training, you will complete your training. Tomorrow onward, you will be a fire warden, right? You will be having an additional and the most important role to play. So I will let you know, or we will learn in this session, what would be your roles and responsibilities as a fire warden, right? Then we will learn how to use the fire extinguishers. The most important thing is we need to know how to use the fire extinguishers, right? There are different types of fire extinguishers. The main thing is if you don't know how to use the fire extinguishers, you want to be able to extinguish the fire, you want to be able to save your workplace, right? Perfect. So now, I'll show you some recent examples. There was some because of minor errors. So it caused like a huge loss in the workplace, in the commercial areas, in the factories, or like in the construction sites. So this is an example from Villa Jumor. You know all you all know Villa Jumor, yeah? Have you been there? Yes. So there was like it caused like there was a small fire in a restaurant. So it erupted and we you know, they were unable like, to control it on a time. So it engulfed almost 19 people. Okay. And the company lost worth millions of Qatari real. Okay. Then there's another example. So we, we were having like a, in 2013, a fire erupted in a factory in an industrial area. Okay. There was human lives lost as well. As well as like a millions of Qatari rian is being lost or burned to ashes. If they would have like um, assigned a fire warden, or the fire warden would have like you know identified the fire, they may have controlled it on a time, and they may have saved lives or the property. Right? Again, there's one another. You know about Sidra Hospital, yeah? Sidra Hospital. There was like a fire in 2013 when they, are, they were working in the underground car parking, they were doing some sort of hot work. So what happened? They didn't assign a fire warden. Huh? So it caught fire, a small spark caused a huge fire and we, they lost millions of Qatari real money as well as some injuries and casualties were reported. Then again, there was a fire in labor camp in industrial area. If you guys know it, like in Shanaya, in 2016, some 11 persons were dead. Okay, if they could have identified the fire on the initial stage, they may have saved lives as well as the property, right? So now here it comes the volume of your responsibilities. Like if you will uh, identify a fire initially, right? Before getting big, huge, you will identify or you, you yourself will attempt, if you can extinguish it, you can just save the environment, right? You can save the workplace or you can just reduce the fire to increase in a huge explosion, right? So we will know what exactly fire is. So what the fire theory is, fire is a combination of three components. How many components? Three components. What are they? Oxygen, heat, and combustible material. Okay, when all these three components meet, it causes a fire. 
Okay, when you will remove one component, there won't be a fire. Right, so now, what is the components of fire? Oxygen, E, and combustible material, or you can say a fuel. Right, so, so now, extinguishing fire is based on removing one of the elements of the fire triangle. triangle. So how we are extinguishing the fire, we, how we are controlling the fire. So if you will remove one component from heat, oxygen or fuel, the fire will be extinguished. Right? But it says based on removing one component of the elements of the tri fire triangle. So, so if you will remove oxygen, fire reduce, or if you will remove heat, oxygen, if you will not give them like any sort of fuel or combustible materials, what will happen? The fire will automatically extinguish, right? So there are uh, three different specific terminologies we are using. When we remove, when we remove fuel, okay, it is called starvation. For example, fuel means combustible material, right? Yeah? Okay, then removing the oxygen is called smothering. Like from here, if you will remove the oxygen, so what will it call? What this will be called? This will be called smothering, right? Perfect. And the third one is if you will remove the heat, it is called cooling, right? Fire triangle. So what are the components of fire triangle? Okay. Oxygen, heat, fuel, yeah? So I want I want you guys to always remember this fire triangle. Okay? So I'm going to keep it here. So I just want this to be visible for you guys whenever we will be talking about fire extinguishing the fire. So we need to remember, okay, we need to stop, okay, or we need to cut one source, either fuel, heat, or oxygen, the fire, uh, the fire automatically will be extinguished, right? So you need to remember this one. So now, removing the fuel is called starvation, do not giving them uh, the fire extra energy. If you will put more and more combustible material, the fire will increase, right? If you will remove the combustible material from there, there, what will happen? The volume of the fire will reduce. Again, with the oxygen level, in the open air, for example, if there is a fire, right? Any combustible material or flammable material catches fire in the open area, right? There's oxygen is everywhere, right? The total volume of... Uh, um, Air is containing 21% of oxygen, right? So oxygen is everywhere. So what we do, if there is any sort of fire in an enclosed area, what we do mostly, we will close the windows, we will shut down the doors, or we will stop the ventilation. What happens? We are stopping the oxygen level, right? We are stopping the flow of oxygen to the workplace or to the fire. What happens? The fire automatically reduces or coming down, right? Again. Removing the heat is called cooling. So once you will remove the heat from there, and definitely the fire will reduce. It will start cooling. You got the point, right? Perfect. I just want you guys to participate. I want you guys to get involved in this session. Right? Number one, sir. Thank you. So now we will go on the ignition sources. What are the ignition sources? What are the causes of fire? What causes fire in your workplace mostly? Can anyone tell me? You smoke, right? It can cause fire. What else? Plug, overloading, electrical overload, okay. What else? Short circuits. They are perfect. Gases and fumes, yeah? We are cooking, right? 
if you go to the kitchen or in the factory, what we use, mostly we use LNG gases here. Right? And chemical reaction, perfect. Yeah, true, very true, yeah. Okay, so what do we do? Hot surfaces, hot plates, right? Then we do hot work. Sometimes we do welding, sometimes we do grinding, sometimes we do cutting, sometimes we do chipping and all these stuffs. What, it's, what it creates when we are cutting any material, it creates sparks, right? It can cause fire, right? But then at some point, chemical reactions. So what, why we are just chemical reaction? When it happens, when you are working in the factory, on a larger scale, we are storing different chemicals on a larger scale, right? If you don't know the specification of the chemicals, and if you will store it together or you will mix it without knowing the specification, what it can cause? The chemical reaction itself can cause fire, yeah? So we will uh, learn this in brief or in detail in the upcoming slides. And then we will know how we can reduce the risk or what are the control measures, right? Perfect. So let's watch this uh, video. So what it tells us about like fire triangle. Okay, I need you guys to focus, huh? Firstly, fire needs fuel or something flammable. The fuel can be a solid material, a liquid, or a gas. Secondly, there must be sufficient oxygen to keep the fire going. Fire is fed by oxygen. A fire cannot start in an oxygen free environment. Such a situation is almost non existent, actually, on Earth. Understood? So one, once we will remove one component, what will happen? The fire will be extinguished or reduced. Right? Okay. We will be having, okay, this is some sort of rule. What if, uh, I will ask you, there are some questions. Okay, I want you to answer this one. What? are the fire triangle consists of what are the three components of fire oxygen heat and fuel perfect okay fire what are the ignition sources for fire fire can can be caused by smoking hot work electrical overload or all of the above all of the above can cause fire yeah perfect so now as i told you in the beginning fire has been divided into different classes right so now classes of fires how many classes of fires are there six, six classes of fire a b c d e f or k right so now what which fire lies in class a the fire caused by combustible solids like wood paper cloth okay this lies yes textiles exactly that lies in class a so which type of fire uh, lies in uh, class b petrol thinner methanol like the liquids Okay, the first A, you can call it like a solid combustible. The second B, you can call it like flammable liquids, 
right? And what about this C, the class C? It, it consists of flammable gases, the gases, right? So what are the example of the flammable gases? Methane, ethane, acetylene, hydrogen, sulfide, H2S, like the most dangerous gases, H2S, right? So now, where we work, we work in Qatar. What is the temperature in Qatar? It is too high in this summer, right? It reaches 48, 49. And what, what are the main natural resources in Qatar? Gas, gas is everywhere. We are surrounded with gas, right? So wherever you will go, there is a risk of fire, right? So this one. Then again, what lies which uh, components lie in uh, class D? Flammable metals. There are some metals, okay, which can cause fire as well, right? Which can catch fire. So what are they? It is sodium, lithium, magnesium, etc. Okay, these are the examples of okay class d fire then what lies in e electrical fire e for electrical fire if someone will ask you what which uh, type of fire lies in class e so definitely that it will come in your mind e for electrical fire so what are they overload or poorly maintained electrical equipments okay the loose joints Okay, using double socket, right? Overloading the sockets. If, for example, if it's the uh, socket capacity is 110 and you are using any power tool more than 240, what will happen? Overload and it will get fire. And what lies in class F? Kitchen, Kitchen related fire, right? What are they involved? Like cooking oils in normally located in commercial kitchens like kerosene oil are cooking the fats and all these stuffs in class F. So, perfect. Thank you.